there is no doubt that Gnome and I have a spotty history. It's not a happy one. Let's just put it that way. I'm not a big Gnome fan. I do think over the last year and a half or so, I have gotten a little bit more accepting of what Gnome is. After trying it for a week in a long-term review, <laughs> I, uh, I found that I liked it more than I did before I used it for a while. So, I can't say I'm as negative as I once was, but I definitely still have my reservations about GNOME and the direction that the GNOME developers have taken their desktop environment. Now, with all that being said, I still pay attention to every GNOME release, simply because GNOME is one of the most popular Linux desktop environments, and many different desktop environments are based on GNOME or use toolkits that are developed by the GNOME guys, so it's important to kind of keep an eye on what's going on there in the GNOME world. So, when I saw that GNOME 42 had been released, I figured I would take a look at it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at the new features in GNOME 42. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So this is GNOME 42, and if you think it looks kind of like GNOME 41, you'd be pretty much right. That's the way GNOME pretty much works. But there are many, many new features, which we're going to go ahead and dive into right now. The first thing you'll probably notice if you start using this is that by default now, there is an option for you to choose between a light and a dark theme. So if we open up the settings and we go to appearance, we'll now see that there is a dark option here. Now... This is very well implemented for what it is. I'm actually very proud of them because a lot of times they don't actually like you to actually do customization. And the fact that they've allowed this is pretty nice. And there's a good reason why they've done it, but we'll talk about that later. So if we check, select the dark theme now, you'll notice that the wallpaper actually changed. There is a selection of wallpapers here that have a, both a light and a dark theme. And they'll change along with the theme. So if you go between the light and the dark theme, it'll choose the corresponding wallpaper. Now, one thing that's not here is time-based change of the dark and light theme. So, say going at like 8 o'clock at night, it would ch change to the dark theme. It doesn't do that as far as I can tell. You have to change this manually. So, that's still something that will probably be the domain of GNOME extensions or something like that. So, it's still good. Now, you will notice that there are some applications that don't follow the dark theme. Things that haven't been updated to use Libadoweta probably won't use the dark theme. So that's going to be just something you're going to have to deal with until stuff gets updated. But that is probably the biggest visual change for GNOME 42 is the inclusion of a dark theme. Now, the reason why they've decided to do this is that theming on GNOME has always been an iffy practice. And we know that the GNOME developers don't like it. But in the past, it has always been possible to download GNOME tweaks, download a GTK theme, and use it. And most applications would work just fine. In fact, I've never seen an application that would break using a regular GNOME theme in that manner. But GNOME has decided that they don't want to deal with that anymore. So they've come up with something called libadoweta. I'm sure I'm mis mispronouncing that. But basically what this does is it's a new design library that is being forced on every developer. And it means that any GTK theme that you put into GNOME Tweaks isn't going to work. It just won't work. All your apps will look exactly the same. They'll either look like this or they'll look like this. So theming on GNOME appears, at least for now, to be dead. Like the CSS theming stuff that they, that has always been kind of a hack for the GNOME Tweaks themes is now something that just won't work. That hack will no longer work. So until someone comes around and fixes that, theming is dead on, on GNOME. But it's not all bad news. With the inclusion of, of more GTK4 applications and lib adoweta, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but <laughs> I've never figured out how to pronounce it. Lib adoweta is how it's pronounced if you sound it out. Okay, we'll call it that. Lib adoweta, you're going to see some polishing of UI elements. So let's open up the calendar application here, and we can actually see some of the stuff here that is a little bit different. So in the past... These would all be buttons, and they'd be blatantly buttons. So actually, if we go back to settings and go back to the light themes, because it's actually easier to see with the light theme, you'll see that these aren't, I mean, they kind of look like buttons. They have some outlines, but some of them don't have outlines at all. 
and it looks a lot cleaner. And I'll try to put a screenshot of what it used to look like up here so that you can see that there's actually quite a big difference in how this looks. And for me personally, this looks miles in a way better. Like it looks so much better. Now, not every GNOME application has gotten this treatment yet. We have the disk usage analyzer, fonts to do, tour, calendar, clock, software, characters, context, weather, and calculator. Those are the GNOME apps that have had this makeover. Any other GNOME app hasn't been there yet. One application you'll notice that isn't on that list is the files application. Now, I can't actually show you what the files application will look like for you because we're not sure exactly what's going to be shipped to a lot of people. If you're using GNOME right now, in GNOME, you're using GNOME 42 right now, you're probably going to have the older version or the non-GTK4 slash live at await the version of Nautilus. So you'll still have the big honking buttons in the toolbar. If you're using GNOME OS like I am, you'll actually see this, which is the lib to wait version. This right here is still in beta. It's not being rolled out with GNOME 42 as far as I'm aware. But you will see if you open this up, one thing that is an amazing change. Like if you're looking at this right now, you'll see the most glorious looking icons. Let's open up the browser here and if we can we can't see the add way to icons. I just want to see the if I can show you these old icons. Yeah, right there. There's a, there's a picture of one right there. That's what they used to look like. That thing was hideous and I've complained about it for years. These are just so much better. And you'll get these whether or not you'll get you get the lib add away to stuff or not. And Honestly, that right there is a reason enough for everybody to upgrade because those icons are way better. Especially seeing how, how now you can't change them. At least these look just so much better. So outside of the lip add to stuff that has this new, much cleaner design ethos, there's also a couple of default applications. So the first one is called Text Editor. And this is, I believe, going to be taking over for Genie in a lot of places. So this is actually... If we look about this now, we're looking at text editor, the alpha version of 42. This is based on GTK4, so you're getting all of the nice new design elements. Other than that, it's a fairly minimal text editor. You're not going to get a lot of stuff here that is highbrow or meant to be used as an IDE. This is just a text editor, simple and easy to use. So you can use line numbers, right margin, it has tab spaces and stuff like that uh, settings. And that's basically it. I don't see anything here for syntax highlighting, but I could just be missing it. But I wouldn't be using this as an ID. Anyways, this is just a text editor. You want to take some notes, you open this up. The other one is slightly more controversial. So for years, the terminal that came with GNOME was GNOME Terminal. Now we're going to get something called the Terminal app. So if we type in Terminal here, we're going to get one called something called Console. Now, first of all, if you're a KDE user, you'll know that they spelled Console wrong. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not how you spell console. Console spelled with a K. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know why they decided to call their terminal the exact same thing KDE calls theirs, but spelling it differently. I don't, I mean, obviously this is the correct way. If, I mean, in, in English, this would how, be how you spell it. But the point is, is that why didn't they just call it terminal? I don't know. Probably just to make it seem like it's new. In terms of what's actually different, you're going to get uh, some UI changes, overlay the scroll bar. If you watch down here at the bottom, you'll get a size indicator. So it'll tell you how big the text is in terms of like columns and rows. And you'll get a header bar here that will change color when you're running as root. So if we do sudo uh, su, you'll see that the header actually changes when you're in root. So that's kind of a cool feature. One thing I will say is that there's not a lot of stuff here in terms of like preferences or changing colors or changing any of that stuff. You'll, you get an option between light and dark themes, how far you're zoomed in, and tabs. That's literally it. So there's no profile support here, nothing like that. And that means that a lot of people who deal with the terminal on a daily basis are probably going to have to download a different terminal, I would say, because a lot of them use their own color schemes, their own syntax highlighting, stuff like that, that requires profile support. And as far as I can tell, there's no profile support here at all. There's no settings here at all, by the way. There's, just, there's at least as far as I can tell, there's no settings. So that is the two brand new default applications. 
Also in GNOME 42, you'll find that they have done several things to improve performance. So videos is now using OpenGL widgets with hardware accelerated decoding. So that should make videos run smoother. File index in Tracker has been dramatically improved. So things like search and stuff should be faster. Input handling has been significantly enhanced, resulting in lower input latency and improved responsiveness, according to their show notes. According to their release notes, I should say. They say it will be beneficial for games and graphics. I'm not sure what they're talking about there. There's no more information about that. The GNOME web browser now enables hardware accelerated rendering, so that should make loading web pages faster. Uh, improvements in how full screen applications are rendered will result in reduced energy consumption, so better battery life. So their connections app has been updated with better RDP support, so that should make connecting to remote desktops easier and more stable. And that's basically all you've got. So the biggest changes here that are going to be user facing are going to be pretty much dealing with the way GNOME looks. And not really in a over the top way, but more more subtle ways. So the cleaning up of the header bars, so that all the header bars look cleaner and more modern without the clunky Adwaita stuff that has been used for a long time. Uh, things like the dark theme that is now included that you can, you can select and the cool way it also changes the wallpaper. I like that feature. The only other big thing that you'll notice is that your themes, your custom themes aren't going to work anymore. So if you're into that kind of stuff, the previous versions of GNOME are going to be more interesting for you than this one. So I wouldn't be surprised over the next year or so if someone comes up with a way to use custom themes again, but right now that's not something that is happening. So that is GNOME 42, just very briefly, the new stuff. In terms of stability and all that stuff, I can't really talk about it because I've only used it for a little while, and the version of GNOME OS that I'm using is actually a beta so i wouldn't rely on stability or speed on that anyways because it's running in a virtual machine so there's not much i can judge there so if you're interested in gnome 42 leave me a comment in the comment section below if you are upset about libadawaita i'd love to hear from you as well you can follow me on twitter at the linuxcast you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast before i go i'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons robert sid devon patrick fred kramer meglin jack knife tools steve a separate linux garrick samuel mitchell arsener j dog carbon data jeremy sean odin arnie andy ross merrick camp josh roley peter a crucible dark minute six primus and pm thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time